everybody, Josh the RV Nerd, Ambitious RV, down here with a brand new one from the Salem and Wildwood Laminated Division, also known as Heritage Glen and Hemisphere, in their Hyperlite Division. This new rear den model, or rear dinette model, rather, like, you might look at this and say, okay, I've kind of seen this floor plan before, like, maybe you've seen it from Cougar or somebody, I don't know. It's a great floor plan, I don't knock them for building this. It's a fantastic couples model, comes in, like, at or just under 30 feet, tends to bring a lot of half-ton towability to the equation, especially with their wide stance stability axles, and this year, they went to those Goodyear Endurance Radials, or Lash, I don't know, but they're Goodyear tires on this, which is excellent. But they've made a couple major changes to just the DNA of this brand. One of the cool things is they do not have any more, uh, like, um, rubber or TPO or anything like that roofing. It is a fiberglass roof cap, like you, you find on stuff usually in a lot higher price point. They've cleaned up their slide flooring to make it match the main floor, and that's the thing. This brand, I feel, is like really punching above its weight class. Like it is doing stuff that it has no business doing and it's doing it very, very nicely. I love the change to the windows. It's very similar, I call them square flow windows, very similar to what you might've seen from like my Brinkley videos, but with a key differentiating factor. It does have a night privacy shade built right in so you don't have the boxy valances and lambrequins and stupid strings that pop and break everywhere but it still has bug screens for the sections of the windows that open. And that is something that most of those square flow windows don't seem to have. So you can get airflow and keep the bugs out and have privacy. It's, it's the best of all the worlds, basically. The underbelly's enclosed and forced air heated. There's radiant barrier work down there, including holding tank heaters to give you some extended season capability. It's prepped for a roof ladder. It doesn't have one straight from the factory, but with that mega front compartment that we're looking at right behind me, you definitely got plenty of room to stuff one of those things. You've also got lots of room for all your stuff in one of these things. Now, this is an early edition of this model. It is possible a couple things might change, and I've got a couple questions for you that may help shape uh, which direction they go with a few things in this video, so I need your feedback as we run along today. And by the way, getting this video footage today, you know, there's tons of new models here at this display, and this is a new floor plan for this division. It's not a new floor plan in the industry, but when I did a, a quick flyby sneak preview of this uh, a little bit ago, a lot of people said, man, you, you got to put that one on camera. So this today coming uh, in by your suggestion. Once again, you folks continue to drive this channel and I appreciate it. You know, you make my job a lot easier. I don't have to think about what to do next. You just tell me where to go. Uh, which reminds me, um, I more than once in my professional life, I've had somebody just tell me where to go. Um, personal life as well. <laughs> so what are we looking at here? Well, it is six and a half foot tall, so it's not extra super tall. It doesn't have a barreled ceiling or anything like that, but it doesn't look small because this has really good window coverage, and I and it always makes the RV look bigger when the slide floor and the main floor match, and they didn't put any sort of specific trim on it. It just really matches. It just, you're, it, you know, and when you're staring right at it, yeah, you can see where the slide floor stops, but overall... I think it gives it a very clean look, and these are very pet friendly. They don't tend to put heat vents in the floor of uh, these uh, Heritage Glens or Hemispheres whenever they have the opportunity. Um, 15,000 BTU air conditioner uh, available up top here, you know, helping keep centralized. And um, I got to double check the spec sheet. Many of these are uh, 50 amp capable and second air capable. I, I'm kind of, I see so many RVs, it does get a little bit murky at times. So apologies, I didn't just have that down from rote memory like I probably should. They, um, what, how can I say this? They really came up with a grand design for that rear dining post, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. That is one of those like clamping telescopic single leg posts. What I like about that, it's not nearly as much of a knee knocker. And I'll get you all this storage open later, but I left one of them open so you can see they're actually putting struts in their overhead cabinets. Most manufacturers are getting rid of stuff. This brand is enhancing their product also um, up under that cabinet, there's some household and USB plugs. Now they're up there a little bit high, but I think if I plug something in, I might be able to kind of wrap a cord around to make that like a little charge station. Your main living room entry door has a window in it. It's prepped for a shade. It doesn't have one from the factory, but it's prepped for a shade. Your bedroom door won't have a window, but it has a window in the bedroom. So I don't know that that's too big of a deal. And let's talk about these windows. They went with what I call the square flow windows, where um, basically what's kind of cool about this is, uh, you know, it's a little bit different shape. It's got an integrated nightshade, so you don't see any sort of boxy valances and lambrequins. You don't see a hundred staples on the inside of those things when you sit down. It's just cleaner looking execution. But 
it actually does have a, uh, you know, that, that pull-down nightshade and still includes a bug screen, which a lot of the, um, whether it's like Euro-style windows or a lot of things don't have that extra bug screen effect right there. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you have a choice between a theater seat or a hide-a-bed. I would personally go with the theater seat, but I know some folks that absolutely detest that big, hard, fixed armrest. Here's an interesting thing. If you want the ability to kick back and recline, but you, uh, you, you don't want the middle armrest, each of these sections is a different piece. So you literally could remove the center armrest, squeeze those two recliners together to make a nice little cuddle up love seat, and then, I don't know, burn it, throw it away, hit it with a sledgehammer. I don't, I don't know what you want to do. Um, or slide it off to the side, use it like an extra set of end stand. I'm, I'm not sure. But my, my point is it doesn't necessarily have to be there. They also go with um, indirect white lighting instead of blue lighting up top. A little bit easier on the eyes in the evening hours. And there's a lot of different builders who make a floor plane like this. This one um, is slightly bigger than some of the other ones. And where you can see that is over here in the slide, they have a refrigerator and a pantry. Um, some brands will kill the pantry. Now, if they remove a pantry from that side and shorten everything up, that means that they would also have to shorten the opposite side of the RV. So including that pantry also means that they've included a little bit longer countertop space. And then this is something um, I would like your feedback on. I want to get it back to the factory. They're, they're willing to consider maybe doing a little bit of a change here. Um, I know from asking this question a bunch of times uh, in the comments before, would you rather see the countertop squared off or do, would you rather have it angled like that to make it look a little more open, welcoming, and inviting when you walk in? Either way, their intention is to keep that mirrored uh, face electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down there. Um, but, I, you know, I, I've heard it before, but sometimes when you look at one RV, you have a different answer than when you look at another RV. Do you, is the kitchen counter, is it, is it fine just how it is? Or would you like it squared off? The irony is prototype number one that they built, it was squared off. Then they decided to shave it back a little bit to make it look not so bulky when you first walk in the door. Um, I don't know, which, which way would you like to go with it? By the way, um, under the overhead cabinets there above the sink is where you're going to find uh, basically the majority of your kitchen outlets. It, uh, it would maybe be kind of nice like if there was some sort of pop-up power tower maybe right roughly where that cutting board is but that's not something that they do currently offer so i guess kind of keep that in mind now our tv over here by default kind of faces a little bit more toward the theater seating but one of the cool things you're standing in the kitchen you want to keep an eye on stuff you can kind of do that too and there is storage all the way under that dinette although there's not really an easy access storage uh method to get to the back of the dinette so you're going to want to only put stuff in there that you don't use uh, regularly all the time. By the way, hidden inside the armrest of that theater seat, you do have some USB plugs. If you do end up going with a hide bed though, consider those would be lost. Um, you know, that's sometimes those things are handy. You know, sometimes people are like, eh, I could live without it. I could do something else with it. No big deal. I just kind of want to point out little details like that. So, you know, when you're shopping, you're better and more educated. Overall, the storage in the kitchen is good. Like I said, dedicated pantry, good drawer space. Everything feels very adequate. Nothing feels very substandard. I do really like the big space for a gigantic flipping wastebasket under this sucker, though. That's not too awful bad. I'm curious to know what you think about this. Now, this is a couple's model. So the fact that the controls, the control panels down here, down low, it doesn't bother me because theoretically, generally speaking, you don't have a bunch of little kids running around pushing buttons. But this is where our water heater controller is, that tankless on-demand water heater. It, it feels like a funny location for it. But look at this, like, full kitchen wraparound backsplash, man. That's pretty cool. I wish more factories would do that. I wish more factories would start putting stovetop side splashes on things. But, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to get my way on that one. Whatever. Um, up here in the uh, bedroom, you got the little fighting rhino beetle kind of, uh, you know, hand towel holder right there. You've got another one for like your shower towels on the other side of the bathroom. We'll get there in a second. The countertop here is uh, pretty big. Now I'm at a really bad angle to showcase this for you. Apologies there. And I, I, I never opened this. Ooh, okay. So that's probably going to be the majority of like our potential towel space in this bathroom because otherwise there's no other storage in here. Now this bathroom is not as long as some of the other ones that I've seen with a similar layout. They probably stole from the bathroom a little bit to do things like enhance and give you that pantry in the kitchen. But I also never felt that this was insufficient by any means. 
So maybe they just made the right call here. Like, I'm okay with it. Now, you do have sliding privacy doors uh, for both the, uh, the bedroom and the bathroom, by the way. And that is a smaller vent fan, but pretty much that's what everybody in this class does. Now, like your stick and tin Salem's and Wildwoods, they went with the Versatilt bed, but they did it in a way that I actually wish all the other Salem's and Wildwoods would do. Instead of some kind of made-up, imaginary 66 by 78 pretend bed size, they just put a 60 by 80 queen bed in it. And you don't have to use the tilt function, but that's a major update that they've done to this brand. They gave it a true queen bed. Hyperlites have always had camp queen beds. So that's a uh, an interesting shift. We, it looks like we might have ourselves a, a couple little guests right here. Now, I, I did uh, misstate something uh, earlier. I think I mentioned that there was a window up here in the bedroom. There's obviously not. I, apparently, I've seen enough RVs that I've I've just got it all mixed up. Now, there's obviously a window on the other side of the uh, bedroom over here, uh, right below our TV hookups. You also see where, uh, you know, it says outlets on both sides of the bed. We're going to see where those are located in just a minute here. First of all, though, taking a, uh, a look at the bedroom storage, let's actually start right down here at the, uh, the drawer level. Peeking inside the hanging wardrobe tower, you see the power outlets, which seems like a weird spot for it. When we put the bed down, what you'll see is they have these little, what I call headboard power pockets. So there actually is a little um, cutaway right there. So like if you wanna reach in, you have a little um, you know, phone charger or something like that, maybe you have a CPAP machine stuffed inside there, whatever the case may be, that stuff is available to you, but it's not like getting caught in, in, in bedding and whatnot. Now that means that it's not quite as like claustrophobic friendly, but it also provides a taller hanging space. That's why I like having so many different brands that all build different versions of the same kind of floor plan. They're all going to do something the other one doesn't. Now remember this has a direct entry bedroom door. That's about to become very important. Or rather, it would have become very important for road mode access because when this super slide closes, you can't slide through to get to the bathroom and bedroom. You have to use the other door to do that. Now you can do it, it's what I call two-stage travel access and you can get to the refrigerator, you can use the dining in transit. It has all the boxes you want checked, except you do have to go in and out a couple doors. So why am I not just showing you that? Well, I'm here in, there in a manufacturer's display and apparently they like use some kind of double-sided sticky tape on the flap that's coming down in front of the, the carpetless slide floor. I don't know if they're trying to cheat or what, but I don't wanna rip the stuff up and peel it up and close the slide, then run it back out, so. Here's what I can tell you unequivocally. When you close the slide, the living room door can get you to the refrigerator, to the sink, the kitchen, and the dining. The bedroom door can get you to the bedroom and bathroom. So this is snacktastic, and that's up there if you want to take a nap or take a crap. Now, if we start talking towability on one of these, like it's just under 30 feet. We're going to call a spade a spade a duck a duck. It's a 30-foot camper. You know, tip to tail, uh, tip of the tongue to the, the, the back of the whatever's back there, sewer hose holder. I don't know. Because this doesn't actually, I would say tongue to bumper. It doesn't have a rear bumper. We'll talk about that when we get there. But um, you, you look at that, and you look at a 6,300-pound empty weight, and it kind of reads and feels a little bit half-ton towable. But I want to direct your attention to the hitch weight it might be a little bit of a chunky monkey up on the front end of this thing a little bit more than some half tons necessarily want to handle that's uh, one of those things if you're not really sure the difference between like tow rating and payload capacity on your vehicle call our team and let us kind of guide you through that so that we can make sure that we're getting you something not only that you like but you're also safe you know it's nice to like uh, like the rv that you, when you're shopping it but it's also nice to like the rv when you're actually towing it now, <laughs> we, can, we can criticize them for not putting the same size baggage doors on both sides of the RV, but the fact is they put a monstrously oversized baggage door over here, and the big door on the other side is still bigger than what most guys put over there, so I ain't really going to knock them too hard for that. Oh, um, up in that front compartment, you also saw the solar charge controller and battery disconnect. Now, the disconnect will always be there, but the charge controller is part of the optional solar package. It's a 30-watt charge controller and 200-watt uh, Go Power sol solar panel up on the roof. Notice the awning, it covers both entry doors and I've never seen a manufacturer do this, not that I can consciously recall, using two different entry doors. And um, I don't know, do you like it? Do you dislike it? I'm kind of, I'm vanilla on it. It doesn't really offend me uh, one way or the other, but um, some people get very specific about certain things. So I'm just kind of curious your feedback on it. I do like how both entry doors are nicely covered by the awning though. Little, um, 
kind of camp kitchen station. There's no like sink, but uh, between the furnace and that, uh, well, I like that they gave us a bigger fridge outside. That's like twice as big as you normally get. You do have that little cold water connect point right there, which is uh, sort of handy. Down below, of course, below the griddle, you do have yourself a propane cooker hooker. Underbelly is enclosed, raining barrier, forced air heated. Is it four seasons, someone's gonna ask. I don't know, maybe. The reason I don't know it's not because I, I didn't do the research, it's because no one's done the research. It's never been cold chambered and weather tested, so I can't make a promise the manufacturer also has not made. By the way, here's a little pro tip for you. I've seen people um, trade in used RVs where uh, they'll say, yeah, the manufacturer forgot to, to seal the holes at the bottom of the window. Don't plug those up. Those are called weep holes. Uh, so that like, you know, condensation inside the RV can kind of bleed out a little bit. So that's a thing that some people kind of uh, get wrong a little bit there. Now, um, you do have that full viewing window in the living room entry door. The uh, bedroom door does not have a viewing window, though, but I don't mind that because... You know, they don't include a factory shade, so that means I have privacy. And as you're seeing right here, we've got the uh, <laughs> the Wish brand version of Captain America telling us all about the weather shield. And what this is, basically, they're not using rubberized, they're not using TPO roofing, they're using a fiberglass uh, skin up on the roof, like you find on like a lot of motorized RVs and whatnot. What's interesting is these um, travel trailers, these hyperlights have that, but the fifth wheels don't. And you're like, why, why, why would that be? Well, it's because the fifth wheels have a profile change as you go up top. So it's uh, kind of hard to do a fiberglass cap on something that has a, uh, it changes shape along the way, you know? All those windows heavily tinted, looking real, real good on this thing. Um, on the back here, I mentioned it doesn't have a bumper. You do have a 300 pound rated accessory hitch, and this is also where they put their sewer hose tube, which is interesting, because that's where a lot of manufacturers years ago would always put a bumper, so a lot of people would store their sewer hose in the bumper. Overall, it's weird, it's interesting, it's different. It kind of works, and we are prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder to get you up top on that roof. Uh, which, once again, I'm not going to call zero maintenance because you still have the same seals up there. Let's talk about that real quick. I've been in this industry for a while, about 15 years now, give or take a little bit. And something I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if somebody feels they have a way to exploit a sales opportunity and take advantage of a customer, they will. You're going to hear people call this a no maintenance roof. If you hear that, my recommendation is run, not walk away from those people. Get away from them because that is snake oil sales and it's only half the truth. You maybe don't have to do a whole lot to the fiberglass skin, but it's always the seals that are the lowest common denominator. This is a greatly maintenance reduced roof, probably easier to clean roof, but it's not a no maintenance RV. That is a surefire recipe to cause you problems and cause you extra money on repairs in their pocket in their service center. So kind of be forewarned to be uh, forearmed on that one. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm a little bit curious to know, um, you know, the different builders of this layout. Which one would you go with and why? And to help you there, I'll leave you a link in the description where I've got some videos of the different people that make one of these so you can decide which one you would go with and let me know why. Also, that same link will get your, well, same description area has a link for pricing and uh, availability because naturally you're going to want to know what one of these runs. Now remember, Salem Hemisphere, Wildwood Heritage Glen, they're the exact same thing, same model numbers, different stickers on the outside. That is it. So that one link might have Salem's or Wildwood's in it. It's all the same stuff. So don't let that screw your head around. We carry both, some at one store, some at a different store, you know. When you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.